Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast, where you'll learn about advanced wealth building strategies from real estate investing to creating massive ROI and secured retirement profits. So pour yourself a cup of coffee, grab a notepad, and lean in, because Big Mike has got the mic, starting now. Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. I'm the Big Mike, Mike Zlotnik. Today, it is my distinct pleasure and a privilege to welcome John Martinez. Hi, John. Hey, Mike. What's going on? Things are good. How about you? Things are fantastic. I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. John is a brother from the Collective Genius Mastermind. Um, and John is an absolute um, go-to guy when it comes to the training of the salespeople. Uh, it's almost like your name has become uh, de facto um, the standard of training. We call it John Martinez training. Everybody knows what it is. It is the best way to train folks around the country uh, to uh, be better salespeople. I think you you you've got the uh, how how should I put it? The secret sauce uh, to human psychology uh, to be able to help salespeople to speak with potential folks they're negotiating with to work out deals on inferior terms and beat out the competition. So, but before we jump there, could you tell us a little bit about you? You're a serial entrepreneur and you are yeah. a highly sought after sales training expert. So, uh, yeah, what, absolutely. What does John live? Do you have family, kids, cats, and so on? <laughs> Yeah, so I live in Springfield, Missouri, right in the heart of the country in the Midwest. Um, uh, married, I have five kids between the ages of two and 15 years old. Uh, so a lot of time, you know, uh, uh, hanging with family and, and running around with the kids. My wife does most of the heavy lifting there with pickups and drop offs, but, but that's my life. Uh, career wise, I've always been in sales my entire life, uh, transitioned to just what I consider to be the funnest part of sales uh, about five or six years ago, which is sales training and, uh, been focused specifically on the, the REI stuff for about the last four or five years. Uh, big outdoors guy, love to camp, uh, love to go to the lake and, and floating down rivers, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's probably uh, me in a nutshell. That's great to hear. It's uh, you certainly beat me with kids. I got four, you got five, so you have the chance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's great that um, you you spend time with with family at the same time. You become really good at at something that people absolutely admire and they they want to learn from you. So, let's talk a little bit about that. So yeah. let's let's take a step back. Your specialty is um, sales executives training, and your special specialty is also training for the real estate investors. So yes. let's be very specific. What what's your bread and butter training? What do you train uh, people to do? Right. So you know, as far as who is in our training, uh, it's investors. Uh, when they you know, if they're a solo entrepreneur or if they have a small team and they're doing the actual buying of properties. Uh, in negotiating, or when they begin to scale up, that transitions to being their their acquisition team, uh, primarily. Anyone uh, taking a lead that comes in and working it, trying to close any closable deal, and trying to do that at the you know get that deal locked up at the the best possible uh, price for them to to you know make a make a profit when they exit. Um, we have found that you know um, kind of uh, tangentially uh, dispositions agents and other anyone that really sells even real uh, retail real estate agents for the companies we work with, they've joined our training too. Even though it's built specifically for acquisition agents, um, retail real estate agents and disposition people seem to be able to take uh, a lot of the core principles and really apply them to what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, sales is just about you know, open and honest communication and helping your, your prospect or the home seller, or whoever you're dealing with, work through that decision systematically. Um, so that's who we work with. Um, we cover basically communication, right? How do we um, make sure we have an open, honest, you know, conversation and can really dig into the details. Um, we dig into a uh, big portion of it is digging into motivation, not just checking a box to say, are they motivated? But but how are they motivated? Why? How important is it? 
you know, what's the personal impact of that motivation? Why would they be compelled to take some type of action? And then also deal killers, which more commonly known as uh, objections, you know, even if they're super motivated, what might keep this person from taking action? And we, we uncover those deal killers so we can work through them too. And then we get into the, the nitty gritty part of negotiation. Um, you know, when there's motivation and we remove the roadblocks, how do we have a successful negotiation so both parties get what they want, feel good about the transaction, and this thing comes to a close? Got you. Uh, that, that's a whole science. That, that's almost a methodology. How you, uh, uh, I guess that's what part of the training is, of sales training is. Right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a sales uh, expert at all, uh, but this makes a ton of sense. You, you certainly want to understand why why people want to sell, why they, they, they have objections and, and try to um, mitigate them. So um, yeah. could you give us some examples of, um, uh, just, just an example of a sales, seller motivation, how do you get them to, and, and, and what's interesting is you said this is applicable, not just people who are trying to buy, but also to the real estate agents, who I guess are trying to yeah. get a listing or trying to, um, get a better rapport with the uh, seller. So right. let's use a little real example um, of okay. a transaction, how the training helps and, and how uh, just give us an example of a situation where yeah. seller wants to sell a house. They want an unrealistically crazy high price. They feel like they deserve it. They feel the house is the best in the world. It's falling apart. How do you get them to yeah. move? And sometimes you got to move them quite a bit because their view of the world is not necessarily the view of the reality. Yeah, um, yeah. So a great question because that happens all the time. That's probably the most common problem that we, we help to solve. And the way to solve it, the way to work through that is really to pose a different question to the seller. You don't want... Really, the question um, that the, the top acquisition agents and investors ask is not how much do you think your house is worth because then you run into that conversation you know you talked about. Uh, unrealistic expectations. They want more than you could ever spend. You don't want to have a conversation of what did your neighbor's house sell for? What's, it, what's, it, you know, what's Zillow say about it? Because that's a losing conversation. What you want to do is actually pivot the conversation so you are asking and they are answering in entirely different question that makes more sense. So I'll give you some examples of that. Um, real estate investors solve problems. I believe this with my heart. I love the real estate investing industry. Um, my mother last year was in a very tight situation and I went to a real estate investor because uh, I knew they were best equipped to, to buy her house. So number one, I want to just say this is something I believe in with my, my heart and soul. It, you solve, uh, real estate investors solve very real problems in ways that conventional real estate agents and others can't do. Um, so that, that kind of dovetails into this specific topic. What the best real estate investors and acquisition agents do is they solve problems and not offer money for houses. So, so I'll explain. Um, it's called reframing of, of the whole question. When we go through and we have a conversation with a home seller, we discover, you know, as I said in the beginning, all the reasons why they would sell, basically motivation, and all the reasons why they wouldn't sell, which are basically objections. We call them deal killers. So I'm going to give you uh, how to reframe um, a very common motivation and a very common uh, deal killer. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to, you know, use real words and, and work, that through, work through that, that um, problem. So let's, let's pretend for the sake of this example the motivation is uh, houses in disrepair. Um, they no longer have the money to do the repairs. Um, they no longer want to be in the house, so they're kind of stuck with it, right? They can't sell the property uh, through the traditional means of a, of, of a traditional real estate agent because it is in disrepair, but at the same time, they're stuck in the house because they, they uh, you know, don't have the money to fix it themselves. Uh, let's say the deal killer is, a uh, very common deal killer you brought up. Um, hey, houses around them are selling for more than what an investor can offer. They know they're going to have to give up some equity. Let's say Zillow's listing it at 150. A real estate investor can pay 80. And I'm going to show you how to reframe and, and ask, actually ask a different question. So this is how we pivot and we solve problems instead of offering money for houses. So if, if I was dealing with a situation like that, this is how I'd reframe the question and the decision. So let's say it's Joe. I'd, I'd say, Joe, here's the deal. Um, 
you're in a tough spot and you've got a, a really tough decision to make. And I don't think I can help you with that decision. I don't think I can make one recommendation to go one way over another, but I think I have a really clear understanding of what the decision is you need to make. Um, and I'll just lay it out for you. And, you know, whatever's best for you is, is, is what you have to do. But I think I really have a good understanding of, of what's going on here. You know, based on our conversation, you told me that the house is, you know, it needs repairs. And that's natural. That's normal. When you've had a house and lived in one for this long, things start to break before, you know, they're out of control. And then you wake up one day, you go, you know, there's more here than I can handle to get it. It's normal. It's natural. But the big deal is because of that, you're now working extra hours just to keep the house inhabitable. You block up one room you can't use entirely. Um, you've got a leak in one room and, and you're worried about the health of your kids. Not only are you worried about the health of the kids because of mold and things like that, you're up all night worrying about it. Uh, you're driving Ubers at night, just trying to keep up with the bills. And you told me you're just stressed beyond belief. You're not sleeping. You stopped working out. Um, you're, just, you're just miserable and you're overwhelmed. And, and I get that. Now on the downside, if you do just sell, the deal is, is you're not going to get as much for your house as you could selling it, you know, through traditional real estate. If you took 50,000 and you put the money into this house and you fixed it up yourself and you took six months or a year and, and did all the work, you could probably, you know, end up netting 10 or 20 or 30 more thousand than what I could give you. And that's, that's real money. So you're, you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place, but this comes to, this is, this is the decision you really have to make. It's what's more important for you to, to, to take care of right now. Is it that you need the stress, you know, relieved? Is it that you need to know you're in a, you know, as soon as possible, in a, a good home that you could feel proud of, that you're not worrying about your kids. You're not stressing out. You get back to, you know, what you called your normal life and that weight is lifted. Or is it more important to you that no matter how long it takes, um, even though you don't have the money, if you could somehow come up with the money or, or fix a place yourself or whatever it is, that squeezing every last penny out of this place is more important, even if it takes a year or two years or six months or whatever it is. That's the question that you have to answer. And I can't answer it for you. What's more important? Relieving the stress, having a house that you know, uh, you know, is perfect for your family, um, getting back to real life, or no matter what it takes, squeezing every penny out of this property. Now, whenever you come up to the answer to that question, then you'll start to know whether it makes sense to sell to me or not. I can't push you one way or the other. This is a decision you've got to make, Joe. So Mike, that was an example of how we reframe the decision from, hey, is your house worth this or this? What are you willing to accept? To, hey, this is a problem. And it's time for you to decide whether to solve that problem or not, even if you're giving up money. So that is a real level thing that, that you know, I've said when I bought houses across the nation that we teach our, our, our acquisition agents and investors to do, because you, you want to ask a different question. And the question you want to ask is in terms of what problem am I actually solving here? Does that make sense? Is that, um, I don't know if I went too fast or anything like that. No, that was good. That was, that was really good. I, I certainly, um, captured the essence of the discussion that you asked the question about their problems and their problems is right. uh, and their concerns is a health and safety of their family and um, pointed out the complexity involved if they had to do the work themselves and what yep. was really important to them so you really got them thinking about problems they're trying to solve rather than the price they they, they would like to get for it and uh, exactly yeah, it's a, it's a great negotiation. Um, that pivot uh, is, is a great technique to, to get them to uh, pay attention to what you want them to pay attention to rather than uh, stuff that will yep. take the discussion to a standstill. So, Because that's, that's exactly it. The only problem with that technique is you don't know how to steer that conversation unless you actually have the conversation of, what is, how is the property actually impacting them on a personal level? What is the real problem uh, that we need to solve? And then what are the concerns they have about taking care of the problem? And unless you have that conversation, then you, you can't reframe that question and, and turn the conversation into what, where the conversation really should be, which is, is this problem worth taking care of now, even if you need to give up some equity? Yeah, it, but it's an objective that a salesperson should be thinking about. <clears throat> they need to discover through whatever questions they need to ask why questions and get them to yeah. get the seller or, or the owner to start talking about 
their problems rather than what do they want for the property. So once you, you hear the, the whatever the little, little you know, nuggets of information they share is probably where you can re redirect them to, into the, those discussions. That makes a lot of sense. So th that certainly is a very, uh, you know, it's, it's a very smart, it's very personable, uh, and, and, and ultimately, um, if, you can't, if you can't get a deal, I mean, it's, it's going to go nowhere. So it does have right. to make sense to, to the buyer and does have to make sense to the seller. And the decision is never an easy decision, but it's, it's so, sort of a, you're taking them into loss mitigation discussion rather than yep. uh, a maximization of the value. So it's, that, that's exactly it. And, and when we look at the hard data around sales and what actually works, it's proven beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, the, the, the questions I was getting to are called problem impact and picture perfect questions. And when we look at salespeople across the country in all industries, the best salespeople, the ones with the highest closing rates, the ones that get the best deals in all industries are the ones that ask the questions around what we just discussed. The problem, what they want to see happen, how it personally impacts them. So it has nothing to do with, you know, different closing techniques or pressuring um, you know, if we look at studies like Huthwaite's study of 35,000 sales calls over 12 years, it's those specific questions that salespeople ask that, that make them the best in the world. So, um, you know, I, I just wanted to point out, it's not just, hey, this is a fun way to do sales. This is what the data tells us is the most effective way to close deals. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. Uh, again, not being a salesperson, uh, I'm, I'm a student of this too. I'm trying to Think how does it apply to me? It is certainly um, goes back to the to, to the basic wisdom of of of, of uh, just you know human interactions. Those who listen yeah. and ask questions do better than those who just tell others what to do. So exactly, the salesperson it sounds to me that they got to ask the right questions and, and let the yeah. owner of the property speak, and then they put them in a disadvantage when they. I mean, not intentionally, but. They they, uh, uh, they give information that helps the uh, the sales uh, executive move them al along yeah. the lines uh, of what they're trying to accomplish. So no matter what they're selling, they could be selling, I don't know, a vacuum cleaner or something. Yep. <laughs> they understand the problem that the that the, <laughs> the person is having with with dirt, dirty carpet. Maybe that's that, that, that that's the way to go. So that makes Absolutely. sense. Uh, yeah, I appreciate again sharing here. So um, let's just talk a little bit about your um, sales academy. I know so many people have taken it. Uh, do you do uh, live events or do you do most of the training is online? I think a lot of the stuff is online, just kind of a series yeah, of we lessons. Do. Yeah, yeah. So we do a, a lot online, probably, you know, 60 to 70 percent um, of the training we do with the teams we train is, is online. And that program is um, – it goes on forever. If, if, if an individual or a team signs up for it, they get training for themselves and their team, as many people as they hire in the future forever. Um, and you can do that training on demand and just work through it yourself. Or I also personally do a live training every single week. And I go through about 12 lessons. And when I'm done with those 12 core lessons, it starts over. So we've had real estate agents or real estate investors with us for four or five years now when we started. And as they've hired team members, seen turnover, moved into different markets, uh, whether it's virtually or, or boots on the ground, they just put those people in the online training and, and we, we train them up. Uh, and then we keep them sharp for years to come. And then we do live events. Uh, we're just going to do one or two. Uh, we usually do three a year. We're, we're cutting it back to one or two uh, a year just because, you know, I'm not a big fan of uh, the travel. However, uh, yeah, we still do live events. We'll do one or two this next year where, uh, you know, we just go through the entire sales process over a two-day period. We call it a boot camp because it's like a boot camp. It's very intense, you know, moving through that much information that quickly. Um, so, yeah, that, 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 those are two ways we deliver training, online and then through boot camps. And I think it's great. And, and, and again, not knowing um, all the details of what you've um, – you train, uh, but we certainly, you know, with, with some of them, uh, we purchased this program with Roman, as you know, that, that whole relationship and uh, everybody who I know, and including, you know, my partner Roman, everybody loves the training. It's just, it's so good and it's certainly applicable to investors, but how does it apply to agents? So do you basically help agents get a listing? Is that generally the, uh, if, if, I guess if you can't, 
So if yeah. an agent is taking your class, I'm assuming that their primary objective is to get a listing, not to buy the house. Right. Right, right. And, and lots of times it's dual purpose now because as the real estate investing industry changes, um, we work with, I'll give you an example. We work with one company that's on track for 3,000 deals this year. And it's because they, they've recruited real estate agents around the country to go in with the cash offer. And if they can't, you know, if that doesn't work, then they just transition it into a retail uh, listing, which is happening more and more around the country with different organizations. Um, so the way, you know, really what it all comes down to is you're figuring out, you know, the, the compelling reason why someone would take action. Now, what that action might be, might be selling it to an investor, might be listing the house with you, could be anything. But what we're really doing in the training is showing people how to, salespeople, you know, in whatever field they're in, how to systematically work through that conversation. So if there is any reason why someone would take action, we can bring that to the surface, shine a spotlight on it, and uh, really turn up that, mo uh, that, that urgency to take that action. So whatever that action you want them to take might be doesn't matter. Again, whether it's listing or whether it's selling to an investor or, or whatever it is, um, we're, just, we're, we're working through uh, a, a systematic process to um, uncover that reason why they would take action and turning up the urgency to take that action. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes to the to the basics of the human motivation. If you can't uh, find the motivation, then it, it, it's a useless conversation. But once you find it and you kind of explore it and uh, uh, stress uh, the, the key points, it, that's the that's the path to the success. So Absolutely. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I greatly appreciate the wisdom. It's a phenomenal um, uh, tool for those who seek to buy or seek to list properties. So what's, um, what's the best way for folks to find you? If they wanted to learn the, from the best, um, yeah. is there a good website? Uh, how do folks yeah, I find just, you? We've got, yeah, we, we put everything on our website. So the website's uh, Midwest Rev. Uh, Rev is short for revenue. So Midwest Rev, R-E-V as in Victor. Dot com. And on there, we've got information uh, and videos about all of our products. Um, but more importantly than that, we've got somewhere between 100 and 150 free training videos for real estate investors that are building sales teams, uh, investors or acquisition agents that are buying houses and quick tips, ways to get over certain objections, talk tracks, that type of thing. Um, and uh, even people for, you know, even free training for lead managers, scripts, how to handle inbound calls, how to cold call. So uh, all the information about our trainings on there. But I think it's also an awesome resource for just anyone who wants free stuff and to, you know, take our, our stuff for a test drive and, and see how it works and if they can actually get real results from it. Midwestrev.com, right? Yes, sir. Uh, the one quick question. So you just mentioned outbound calling. Are you still doing it? Uh, is that something you're still um, uh, offering to investors? Or this is, I, I, I know you, you used to have that right. program. Yeah, we actually got out of that business. It was a very, uh, it was successful and, and it was a great business and we helped a lot of people. But at the end of the day, um, we did a, an end of the year review of the companies we own and we determined that, that having a call center uh, was, was something we no longer wanted to run because of uh, the changes in the telco laws and, and the legal stuff that goes with it. And at the scale we were doing it. You know, you're getting letters every week from different states, attorneys, generals. And, you know, um, at the end of the day, it, it sounds crazy, um, but it's the same thing we're talking about here. Our motivation was not so much to make money, but to help people. And when it became too stressful to run, we, we shut that company down. But we still do provide all the exact scripts we used um, and all the same training we used to train our agents in the Philippines. So if anyone else is running a call center, uh, they are free to have those. They worked beautifully. We made about a hundred thousand uh, calls on a daily or dials on a daily basis, and uh, that thing worked really, really well. So again, all that stuff's on the website, so you can grab all the resources we developed for our call center and use it on your own if if anyone needs to. I appreciate you getting out of the business. It's I have to say that I've I've been the recipient of some of the calls, uh, and it's sometimes the the it's a how should I put it. It can be aggravating, not necessarily your calls, but when they call you and they, they, they want to sell you uh, extended warranty for the car you, you haven't owned for 12 years. <laughs> yeah. 
that these calls get a little aggravating to say the least. So. Yes. I mean, that's the nature of cold calling and that's why there's been so much legislation behind it this year. And, uh, you know, people really getting taken to the cleaners, uh, as far as fines and things like that. So we, you know, at the end of the day, we just realized that's not a business we want to be in. It's an, it's an incredibly effective way to produce leads less so now than it was two years ago, just because of, uh, the congestion of, of, you know, cold calling for not just real estate, but everything under the sun. It's, it's got a bad rap. People, you know, don't take those calls anymore. Uh, but it, hey, it still works. It's still a great way to, to generate leads. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I certainly hear you. Um, uh, but hopefully the environment will change and all this cold calling will come down. And now it's a lot of cold texting <laughs> too. It's getting yeah. all these texts that are, uh, could be aggravating too. And then you tell them to remove Absolutely. you and then they still text you and, and some, some people are violating and that's why the, um, uh, the, the, the attorney generals get involved and they start yeah. breaking down. And if you're a legit player, some of the bad, bad, bad illegitimate players create just bad taste in their mouth and you may get swooped under the same, uh, yeah. yeah, wave. So no matter of speaking. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes the bad apples, you know, ruin it for everybody, but that's, you know, that's just, that's the way it is. I got you. All right. So any final wisdoms? I greatly appreciate you coming on the podcast. Appreciate your, your thoughts and, and um, people love you. You, 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 by the way, just, just my, my quick thoughts on the feedback. You should probably grab a website like John Martinez Training, uh, something like that. And uh, you, you may want to maintain confidentiality that it's you, but such a, you know, some, such a catchy, um, people know you by that name. And, and it's uh, yeah. uh, Midwest Rev. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just more of a... To, to, yeah, to, we've also got the yeah we've also got the REI Sales Academy. Um, maybe maybe that's a better link. side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you click REI Sales Academy, it'll take you to our website. And it's kind of funny, you know, when you start a business, you just you need a website and um, you need you need a, a, a domain. And at the time, we didn't know what where we'd be trading. We actually trained up into about four dozen industries. So. Uh, we knew we just help companies, you know, we're based in the Midwest and we help companies generate more revenue. So it made sense at the time, but you're exactly right. Nowadays, things are kind of pivoted and we're known as the REI Sales Academy and then John Martinez Training as well. If you look up any of those, it'll, it'll, it'll take you to us though. Yeah, I mean, you may want to grab a couple of website domains if they're available. Uh, it's the same thing when, when I went to CG and people uh, were telling me, listen, when they want to schedule time with you, it just you know, that's why I came up with a bigmikecall.com and for the podcast, bigmikefun.com. It, it's yeah. it, these are easy names to remember. So just you know, my my feedback. You, you have a great product. Uh, you could sort of enhance uh, by having um, uh, a catchy name, like you know, Sales by John. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, man. I think uh, we need to jump on that. I might jump on that this afternoon. So, but any final thoughts? Any other wisdom? Any other things to share? Uh, you know, um, not really. Uh, the only, you know, big overarching theme I, I would leave people with is just, uh, the, the, it's very simple, but sales isn't about pressuring anyone to do anything. Sales is just about uncovering the reasons why someone would do something. And the only way to get there is to t remove pressure and so people feel safe opening up and then asking questions. So um, anyone out there buying houses, if you stop pressuring and take a step back and just really try to figure out what's going on in people's situation. If you do nothing more than that, you'll, you'll buy more houses and you'll do it at deeper discounts. Yeah, there's so much wisdom to this. You know what this reminds me of the movie, uh, The Matrix. I can't remember which one it was, but there's a moment when um, Neo uh, is with Oracle and uh, uh, he's asking questions, but really it's all about, he's there to find out why, but he's already made the decision. So you're just helping the yeah. person make the decision by uh, by guiding them to the right questions. So it's that's exactly like, it. Uh, is it free will or, or predeterminism? Uh, but if they're already talking to you, if they're spending the time, if you just help them a little bit to really see why well, why they're doing this, then 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 they, they the decision is just so much easier. It's almost like they need your help to understand why they're making the decision. But the decision has hopefully been made because there's so much pain on their side so that is exactly you know that is beautiful I, i've never thought of it uh, of it or made that connection but you're exactly right you know the way way real estate investors market today 
if someone submits a lead, chances are the vast majority of them have already made that decision, just like you put it. And it's your job to help them uncover why this actually makes sense. Um, you know, the reasons behind it. So I, I think that's, uh, you know, I might have to steal that from you, Mike. Switch the moon metrics again. I think it's the, I think it's number two, second metrics when he's there with the Oracle it's just a bunch of birds and then he's going to fight with a whole bunch of agents. And there's this moment yep. and, and that's that conversation. You're just here to find out why you already made the decision. So. Yeah, that, that is awesome. I love it. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on, on, on the podcast once again, sharing your wisdom and your experience. Thank you kindly. Uh, and uh, have a great uh, rest of your day and rest of your week. You too, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Take, take care. Thank you for listening to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. To receive your copy of Mike's How to Choose a Smart Real Estate Fun Book, head to BigMikeFun.com or visit Amazon and type Mike Zlotnick. Keep listening and keep investing Big Mike style. See you on the next episode.